This is it. This is it. The hour and the minute that we've been waiting for. The is uh, the premier the proof. Yeah, and um, the is um, the speaker of the legislature, Mayor uh, Rosemary Malapo, on the red carpet. And uh, yeah, I, I I I wonder what is going on around the streets, how are they feeling, how, what are they expecting, what is it that they would want the Premier to say to them, what is the present that they expect the Premier to give to them as and when he will be delivering his very, very last um, State of the Province address. Doc, if, 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 if uh, you were a fly on the wall, in that chamber. What is it that, that one thing that you don't want the Premier to miss or you don't want the Premier to finish the whole address without mentioning it? Can I give you? <laughs> for me, one is water scarcity, the energy crisis, unemployment, service delivery, um, um, corruption in the province. Those are some of the things that, you know, the Check the routines.
thank you very much. Good morning. Can we can we all rise? Honorable ministers and deputy ministers who 
at present here. I'm told Honorable Minister Chabeni and Honorable Deputy Minister Matlobo are also in our midst. You are almost welcome. The Deputy Speaker of the National Assembly, Honorable Lechisa Zinoji, also I'm told is in our midst. You are welcome. Honorable members of the National Assembly, former members of the legislature, and mayors and speakers of district and local municipalities present, you are most welcome. I also take this opportunity to acknowledge the presence of the members of the judiciary, the judge president of the Popo High Court, and all other judges. Let me also acknowledge the presence of the Provincial Secretary of the Ruling Party, the African National Congress, Bamusanda Ruben Matashi. Is the mic working? Thank you, thank you. Speaker of the legislature. Honorable Speaker. Honorable Rosemary Mulapo. Honorable Speaker. 
on a point of privilege. Deputy Speaker, Honorable Stereke Matibe. Thanks very much. You can address the presiding officer's chair, Honorable Man. Doing my voice every time. Yes. Thank you very much. Uh, Honorable Speaker, I want to bring this on a point of privilege. Honorable Premier, with due respect, will you please, before you address this house, you take 10 minutes of your time. You apply but to be the principle. Principle number four, which is the quotas. Principle number five, which is information. And the principle number seven, which is redress. And then you go out and address the protesting people who are absent. <laughs> Must give 
Secretary of the African National Congress, Bam Sanda, Ruben Madashe, Katana. 
شروع شود The leadership of the ruling party, the African National Congress, leaders of the opposition parties, chairperson of Limpopo House of Traditional Leaders, Hosin Bolo, and your deputy, Pase Hoshi Ramugudu, all our esteemed traditional leaders present here. Former MPs and MPLs, Baruti Barena Kamuka, Baba Lofa, Kibone, Ba South African Council of Churches, Bawanafa, Kibone, Ba Zion Christian Church, Ba St. Engenas, Lubonaba Wanafa, Director General and Heads of our Departments, Stalwarts and veterans of our struggle, the judge president of our province, Advocate Patwidi, and all the judiciary members of the judiciary present here, mm -hmm. provincial commissioner of the South African Police Services, General Tim Bihadere. Heads of our Chapter 9 and Chapter 10 institutions, the, leader, the leadership of our, all our community based organizations present here, youth, women, and other communi community leaders, members of the media, distinguished guests the people of Limpopo as a whole, the people of Limpopo as a whole, which therefore implies that I'm addressing everybody in Limpopo now. <laughs> Good morning, Abshi. Huyemore Nda. Tobela. Slow chile nan mais mano. As I stand before you today on this significant occasion of delivering my last annual State of the Province address, I am filled with prof a profound sense of gratitude and reflection. It has been an honor to serve as the Limpopo Premier since 2013 leading our fifth and sixth administration through their journeys and transformation and renewal. What is more profound is that our being here marks 30 years of democracy in South Africa. It has been an illustrious 30 years of responding to the needs and expectations of, of the people of, of Limpopo altering their economic conditions, upgrading them, and so, I mean, affirming their belongings to this, their belonging to this beautiful province and our country, South Africa. We are therefore reminded of the scenes that characterize the first non-racial, non-sexist, and democratic elections in April 1994. The journey of stabilizing and growing Limpopo over the years is the evidence of our commitment to good governance, sustainable development, including the provision of public goods and services. The amalgamation of three Bantu, Bantu stand governments and the Transvaal Provincial Administration marked a significant step towards unity and progress, Advocate Ramakro. It laid the foundation for a single, inclusive, and integrated province. Consolidating Limpopo was an important part of nation building. It was a key strategy to dismantle 
the racial and ethnic divisions erected by the apartheid regime. We have gone a long way in fulfilling the, the constitutional mandate to do the following. Heal the divisions of the past and build a society based on democratic values, social justice, and fundamental human rights. The journey we have traveled cover transformation and development in critical areas, such as the economy and the provision of public goods and services, like water, electricity, roads, education, health, and homes. Not just houses, but homes. Let us delve into some facts and figures that highlight the progress we have made since our hard won April 1994 democratic breakthrough. The first democratic elections in April 1994 resulted from our liberation struggle, struggle against colonial and apartheid forces and their beneficiaries. It is surprising that sections of these categories still want us to go back. Those who are still saying it was better in Egypt. They spread the false notion that colonialism and apartheid brought about development and better life. Meanwhile, life for the oppressed was synonymous with living in hell. Our democrat democratic breakthrough ushered in our current constitution. This was the first delivery following the following democratic, following the first democratic election in, in April 1994, ushering in of this constitution and taking our people out of the house of hell. Through the constitution, we delivered fundamental human rights to all, regardless of race, gender, color, or creed. Please allow me to pay tribute to our heroes and heroines. I am going as far back as the kings and queens who led our wars of resistance against colonization. I salute the stalwarts who carried on from 1912, January the 8th, by leading our liberation struggle. Our message of heartfelt condolences goes to all the families who lost their loved ones, going back to the beginning of our wars of resistance against the heartless system of colonization and apartheid. When we achieved our April 1994 democratic breakthrough, less than 30% of rural households had access to electricity. Today, honorable members, we have electrified at least 94.6% of rural households in Limpopo. <laughs> marking a significant improvement in access to electricity. People in rural areas overwhelmingly dependent, dependent on firewood to cook and using their three-leg cords. There was deep deforestation impacting trees and other plants an important, making them an important source of energy. Forgetting that we were also depriving ourselves from a very important source of oxygen. Now that we have given our people electricity, forests have risen in various areas that were affected. Thanks to our massive household electrification program. In healthcare, it is pleasing that we currently have 476 clinics in Limpopo. 
216 of our health care centers, that is 45%, operates 24 hours a day. In 2010, we reached 80% of access to water, reaching more communities and improving public health outcomes. However, because of various countervailing, countervailing factors, we have experienced a decline to 69.1%. We are worried about this and we are hard at work with authorities in the water provision space to improve the situation. But, honorable members, as I continue with this speech, you'll understand the reason why we declined. It's not like we decreased the provision of water to our people. There were other underlying factors that came into play. It is important to note that we have improved access to sanitation to 63.1%, up from 26% in 2002, and up from a far lower baseline in 1994. Our third road network has significantly expanded since April 1994. It is now covering rural areas that were neglected before. Places where you never thought you will ever had a tart road. You've got tart roads today. Through this progress, we have enhanced connectivity and improved transportation efficiency, facilitating economic development in, 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 in our province. At present, our target, our target is to surface 13,800 kilometers from gravel to tar. Ladies and gentlemen, we have worked very hard in education. Our efforts are now visible in improved metric results. We have improved from a 38% metric pass rate in 1996, now at 79.5% in 2024. Our metric pass rate now approximates our 80% target. Madam Speaker, Limpopo's contribution to national economic output over the past three decades has improved. In 1996, Limpopo contributed 5.3% to the national GDP. Despite global economic and pandemic crises, crises our contribution to national GDP reached 7.3% by 2023. This reflects the strategic efforts undertaken by the province to harness its vast natural resources, develop critical sectors, and attract investment. The demographic landscape of Limpopo has undergone a, a remarkable transformation over the past eight years. This is evidenced by the consistent increase in the number of our households. From just over 911,000 households in 1996, we have increased to over 1.8 million households in 2022, which means our households have now doubled. Hence, I would say it does not necessarily imply that we have reduced in the provision of water. It's just that the people, the households, have increased. <laughs> this substantial growth in households highlights the purpose growing population. 
We have now reached over 6 million people according to the latest census. Our population growth underscores our evolving socio-economic dynamics and governance environment. Particularly, it underlines the expanding demand for public goods, government services, and infrastructure development. The latest census report highlights Limbobo's economic growth with various sectors contributing to employment creation and development. However, it underscores the importance of addressing the challenge of youth unemployment, as well as education and skills development. The provincial model development strategy has identified Olokwani, Fetakomutubazi, and Tulamela as amongst the most populated 17 municipalities in South Africa, highlighting the growth and potential of these regions. Limpopo has established a firm role in food security in our country. 29% of our households grow food within their yards. This is a testament to the fact that we have an active citizenry in food production. We remain determined to support our people in food production. Together, let us build on the progress we have made, harnessing the potential of youth, investing in infrastructure, fostering industrialization, and promoting sustainable development. Surely, Honorable Speaker, ladies and gentlemen and honorable members, you will agree with me, regardless of party political affiliation, that we have made progress in addressing the legacy of colonialism and apartheid. We also all acknowledge that there is still a lot, a lot of work to be done. I am sure we all agree that the road to success is a journey but not just a sprint. Honorable members, we reaffirm what His Excellency, President Matamera Cyril Ramaphosa, said during the State of the Nation address earlier this month, that the ANC is true for a non-racial and non-sexist democratic South Africa. This government has transformed the lives of millions of our people. The President further outlined the challenges our country faced. Various events countervailed our march to prosperity. These include state capture and other forms of corruption, gender-based violence, global economic crises, and the COVID-19 pandemic. The President said, and I quote, while each of these events have left, has left its mark, our country has withered every storm. Yes, we have the scars to show, but in every case, South Africans have been resolved. We have not only persevered, but we have come back stronger and more determined. All these efforts have demonstrated how South Africans value the freedom that, has won, that was won after decades of struggle. These ways surely reflect the journey we have traversed since 2013 when we took office as the fifth administration. In 2013, Limpopo was at a critical juncture. Five departments were under national administration. Confidence in our provincial administration was waning from our people. I can't forget what former MEC 
MEC Magazi said in our first meeting in that, uh, that executive council in 2013, that Premier Che Dinyaka And she insisted that we should take a resolution that we must go to the churches and we did exactly that on our base shop. <laughs> Honorable members, our task was clear, but yet daunting. It was to breathe life back into these departments and restore confidence in our governance. It was a journey akin to the mythical phoenix rising from the ashes a symbol of renewal and resilience that resonates deeply with the spirit of Limpopo. In this journey of transformation, I am reminded of the words of the renowned South African poet, Lebohang Mashile, who once said, we are all broken faces trying to keep flowers alive. This metaphor beautifully encapsulates the state of Limpopo when we began our work. We were a province striving to nurture growth and prosperity despite the cracks of the past challenges. Yet, like the, like the resilient vase that holds the water nurturing the flowers, we too held onto hope and determination. Over the past decades, sorry, over the past decade, we have worked tirelessly to bring stability and sound administration to our province. Through collective effort and unwavering commitment, we have seen remarkable improvements in audit outcomes and overall provincial performance. The once prevalent disclaimer audit opinions are now a thing of the past in our departments, public entities, and municipalities. No department is under administration today as we speak. No municipality is under administration today as we speak. No municipality has an a disclaimer audit opinion today as we speak. The story of Limpopo's renewal and development is far from over. It is a continuous journey, one that requires an active citizenry and the collective effort of every community and leader. Together we can build on the foundation we have laid striving for even greater achievements and brighter future for all who call Limpopo home. Our trajectory towards a Limpopo that we all yearn for is taking shape during an unfavorable harsh global reality. The global economic outlook is severely affected by the NATO-Ukraine and Russia, Russia war. Western unilateral sanctions outside the United Nations legal and multilateral, multilateral frameworks and the genocidal Israeli military campaign against the Palestinian people. Our national government took a good decision to refer this matter to the International Court of Justice to stop the genocide to stop the killing in Palestine. Under the circumstances, we need to build greater self-reliance and increase our share of value addition in finished products. It is important to continue our efforts to achieve manufacturing localization, to deepen and expand domestic beneficiation of our minerals, and primarily agricultural products. 
industrialize and drive large scale employment in our in our in our province. Ladies and gentlemen, honorable members, the Mpoko population landscape has changed. Since 2022, we are now the fifth largest province in South Africa. Although we have moved from the fourth spot, we have become the largest contributor to Houghton's population. Our economic and social development programs should help us retain our youth while protecting their freedom of movement. Democracy has brought about many shifts. More people stay where they want to. Over 60% of South Africans are staying in urban centers and peri-urban centers. This is linked to an increased movement of people from rural areas and urbanization. However, Limpopo remains youthful, with a greater population of our population still between 18 years and 34, 34 years old. This calls on us to strengthen programs that will address the challenge of youth not in employment, education, or training. The program that we have include our youth development strategy, including skills development, placement in work, and youth empowerment. From the year 2000, mining became the largest contribution contributor to our economic growth. Mining contribution to our GDP rose from below 20% in 1999, reaching a peak of 28.1% 20, in 2008. The 2008 global economic meltdown affected our economy, resulting in a decline in many sectors. At 25.6%, mining reached a new peak of its contribution to our provincial economy in 2019. The rise of mining in Popo has led to the positive economic developments that, are witne are wit are witnessing wi that we are witnessing along the Dilokong Corridor in Fetahom Tuwazi, Skukune, and Waterberg District. It is important to distribute economic development evenly, to do away with the legacy of uneven development. Honorable members, it was not easy to untap this potential. We must thank those who came before us. Honorable Premier Ramathodi, Honorable Premier Mloto, and Matali. It was not very easy to untap this mining potential, but we did untap it. And as a result, honorable members, we have succeeded as a province of Limpopo to eliminate mud houses in the province. If you travel from Musina throughout Limpopo up till um, Mutse and look for mud houses. That was a common feature prior to 1994. You'll really search for them now. Prior to 1994, but Baba proud to go Today, you've got houses in this province which are an equivalent of houses that you find in big cities. Thanks to this ANC government. Because of that, honorable members, Every district in Limpopo 
today we are aware that has something to offer. By developing their potential advantages, the government shall lift up the economies of all districts and improve the quality of life of our people. We are, and we are, products of hope that see in the building spring leaf upcoming summer harvest. We are products of hope that see in the budding spring leaf upcoming uh, summer, uh, in, sorry, that see in the budding spray, spring leaf upcoming summer harvest. We see in the dry beds of our rivers, simmering springs as rains begin to fall, regenerating the wetlands that had temporarily gone to sleep. The hope is born, the hope is born, the hope is born out of the significant contribution that the mining sector is making to our provincial economy. General government services are the second largest contributor, ladies and gentlemen, to our provincial economy after mining. The government is followed by finance, real estate, and trade catering and accommodation, reflecting the importance of the tourism sector in Limpopo. I am pleased to report that Limpopo has seen a growth in investment. Our annual investment conferences, beginning with the first in 2021, have contributed over 280 billion rands in investment pledges. The difference that these pledges brought about is reflected in their immediate implementation. These investments include mining, agriculture, agro-processing, green energy, property development, as well as trade, catering, and accommodation. Rising investment is a sign of confidence and is important to us to address unemployment and poverty. We experienced an increase in employment from 2019 to 2023. Limpopo is in the top three provinces that have shown rising employment. Although we lost 40,000 jobs in the last quarter, we have created 182,000 jobs in 2023, <laughs> making us the second largest province in job creation. The provincial government has implemented enterprise development and support programs. These programs support local enterprises, including small, micro, and medium enterprises, as well as cooperatives. We achieve this through access to finance, markets, training, and essential business equipment. We have established partnerships with organizations such as Impact Catalyst, Coca-Cola Business South Africa, and the South African Brewery Foundation to implement enterprise development programs targeting youth, women, people with disability, and graduates interested in new venture creation. Madam Speaker, in August 2023, the provincial government of Limpopo took a significant step towards regulating the liquor industry by enacting the, liquor, the Limpopo Liquor Act, Act number no. 9 of 2009. This legislation was put into effect in alignment with the requirements set forth by the National Liquor Act of 2003 and the National Liquor Norms and Standards. The implementation of Limpopo Liquor Act commenced on the 1st August 2023, marking a pivotal moment in the province's effort to ensure responsible 
and regulated liquor consumption. I must report here that we met with the South African Council of Churches and they are a lot worried about the mushrooming of liquor outlets in our communities. And I can assure them that this government is a listening government will attend to that. Ladies and gentlemen, one of the key aspects emphasized by the Limpopo Liquor Act is the protection of the rights of individuals to a peaceful environment. This includes regulation of oper operational times, noise pollution, and adherence to trading hours, all aimed at promoting responsible alcohol consumption and minimizing negative impacts on communities. By enacting and operationalizing the, the Limpopo Liquor Act, the provincial government is taking proactive steps to ensure a well-regulated and harmonious liquor industry that prioritizes a well-being of residents and communities. Honorable members, the Limpopo provincial government is taking steps to ensure the sustainability of entities under the Limpopo Economic Development Agency. These include establishing a Provincial Public Finance Management Act 3D Entity Monitoring and Evaluation Task Team. The purpose of this task team is to monitor the implementation of the leader group and GAL sustainability and fin financial recovery plans. Here we are strengthening institutional governance and performance management. Limpopo is known as a province where agriculture plays a pivotal role. In the first quarter of 2020, up to, up to the third quarter of 2021, Agriculture was the third largest contributor to employment in our province, after community and social services as well as trade. It was overtaken by construction in the last quarter of 2021. In the first quarter of 2022, agriculture returned to the third spot in the province's sectoral employment contribution. We have made significant progress in agriculture. We implemented agricultural support programs, such as the land care program, the revitalization of agriculture and agro value chain plan, and the market access certification program. Efforts in climate smart agriculture, skills development research, skill development, research, and infrastructure development have contributed to agricultural, agricultural production. Our commitment to agricultural education and livestock disease control, in addition to other policy interventions, further demonstrates our resolve to build a prosperous and inclusive agricultural sector. Today, I stand before you filled with a profound sense of pride and accomplishment as we reflect on the strides we have made in the realm of public works and infrastructure development. Over the past four years, under the sixth administration, our collective efforts have borne fruit, contributing to the transformation of our province landscape and the quality of life to our people. We embarked on a journey in 2019 with a clear vision of delivering socio-economic infrastructure to serve as the backbone for service provision across our province. I am thrilled to report that we have successfully delivered 50 socio-economic infrastructure projects showing our dedication to the people of Limpopo. Many of us seated here today are beneficiaries of the expansion of our road infrastructure network by over 6,000 tarred kilometers since 1994. 
6,000 tat kilometers since 1994. We sometimes just have to step out of this hall to see, to see how the 15 kilometer N1 bypass ring road transformed the outlook of Polukwani or the ease of flow of traffic in Fetahomu Tuwazi after the expansion of the R37 road. Go to Musina and many other villages in our province. We have made them attractive and accessible. People are no longer afraid of buying luxury cars in those villages. During the State of the Province, during the State of the Province address last year, we mentioned our road infrastructure projects. I am pleased to report on the progress we have made thus far. The upgrade of road D4180 from Atok Mine to Haslebe is in the final stages of design. Work will commence on this crucial road shortly after the design is, is completed and contractor appointed. Road D4260 from Malobe to Pokwani has already had the contractor appointed and construction has already started. This upgrade will significantly enhance transportation in, the, in, the, in, in that area. When and where cannot be answered by me. I'm not, I'm not responsible for your ignorance. Regarding roads D4090, D493, D494, and D4096, known as Malamati roads, the contractor has already been appointed. The scope of work and preliminary design reports for roads D1 D4199 from Appel to Hangwan and D4190 have been approved. The consulting engineer is currently working on the detailed design report for this road. We have already made significant progress on priority roads in the province. Amongst others, the construction of road D3278 from Bloomberg Hospital to Buffalo Swoop in the Capricorn District is well underway. Roads D3561 in Sohole 1 and Sohole, Sohole 2 from N11 to Maseve Nature Reserve in the Waterberg District is progressive. We have also commenced work on Road D3669 known as Mabunga Access Road in the Bembe District. Road D3734, also known as the Tatama in the Mobani District, is currently under construction. The construction of roads D3436, D3428, and D5007 in Haram Shwani, Haram Metwani, and Haram Kokwana in the Cape Town district is progressing well. Similarly, the construction of road D3248 from Tapani access to Noameto in the Moban district is underway. We have also commenced work on road D4283 from Glencau to Malaga in the Skukune district. The construction of road D3671 from Musekwa to Mar Maranibe in Bembe district is progressing. Similarly, the construction of road D4109 from Mamatonya to road 
D885 in the Capricorn District is underway. We have created employment in all road infrastructure projects where construction has begun. The Hamala, Hamaleka, I think this answers that, that uh, journalist who once asked me about the performance of Ra. Is Ra still having money? Is Ra still building roads? These roads, all of them are built by Ra, road agency Limbo. The Hamalekan steel bridge, steel, steel port bridge, situated on road D2219, connecting to the R555 in the Skukene district, is a joint effort between road agency Limpopo and mining companies in the Fetaho Mutubats municipality. I am pleased to announce that this project has achieved a 35% progress and is on track for completion in November this year, 2024. In the Waterbeck district, Road Agency Limpopo has entered into a memorandum of agreement with Northern Platinum, securing for one million rands in funding entirely in funding entirely provided by the Northern Plat Platina. This initiative aims to enhance a bridge and upgrade a three kilometer stretch of road D2357, connecting to road 511. Having commenced in November 2023, the project is presently at 32% completion stage. The project is to complete, to be completed in August 2024. In the Mopani district, Road Agency Limpopo has signed a memorandum of agreement of, with Palabora Mining Company to rehabilitate and upgrade Road D3786 in Mashishimale and Road D4424 in Lulekani with a combined value of 205 million rands. Road Agency Limpopo and the mining company have agreed to contribute 105 million and 100 million respectively. The project will commence in March 2024, aimed to be completed in September 2025. Additionally, we have allocated resources for road maintenance and rehabilitation. This will improve the overall quality of our infrastructure and contribute to the longevity of our road network. We have also... <laughs> Maybe this means I must drink water. <laughs> we have also given 19 roads to be maintained by South African National Roads Agency Limited to leverage, to leverage on its capacity. Thanks to Minister Chikunga. Education saw remarkable progress with the completion of 12 schools that had been devastated by severe storms. Schools like Naridi Secondary in Bembe and Keto Numali in Mopani, amongst others, stand today as symbols of resilience and hope for our children and communities. Our cultural heritage and government, government structure were also strengthened with the delivery of traditional council offices, including the recently completed offices of Karapathelo, 
bakweni ba matlala davana and bakwena ba matsepe traditional councils in our quest to promote culture and knowledge we have completed new library facilities and selecting Karisho Ampasel, Mavalani, and Rani Mead. We have also embarked on the construction of four new libraries in Chaulu, Sukuku Nebuchabel, and Flayfonte. Our commitment to public safety and agriculture saw the implementation of the Mpopo Traffic College projects and the construction of agricultural service center offices. Healthcare infrastructure received a significant boost with upgrades to laundries at various hospitals and the construction of new medical facilities, ensuring that our communities have access to quality healthcare services. We have refurbished the Skumansdal Museum and the Toando Government Complex. Through these projects, we have created over 21,800 work opportunities, empowering women, youth, and people with disabilities. As we look to the future, we remain committed to our infrastructure development agenda. Just last week, we have conducted short training on the site of the Limpopo Provincial Theater. This, const <laughs> this construction will unearth new talent and position our province as a key player in the creative arts economy. I am sure that our artists, our artists will really appreciate this. And I must announce here that we've got a number of them in this hall. We have got Master KG here in the We have got Bo Pleasure. Pleasure is here also. We have got Penny Penny. We have... Thank you, thank you, Papa Penny. Aye, Papa Penny, aye. I can't mention all of them, but our artists are here. They have honored the, the invitation that we sent to them. <laughs> Census 2022 shows that 69.1% of our households have access to water. However, amid growth in the number of households, 20.5% of our households has not yet been connected to pipe water. In addition, lack of adequate bulk infrastructure and reticulation capacity remain a significant challenge in ensuring universal access to water. This is despite the fact that our dams have recorded the average storage capacity of 81.8% as at the January 2024. As I said earlier, to tackle these challenges head on, we strengthened our engagement with water service authorities. Since 2013-2014, the province has spent 26.6 billion rands on municipal infrastructure grant, with the majority of this spending going to water. Recent figures shows that during the period 2023-2024 financial year, the provincial municipal infrastructure grant allocation is approximately 3.52 billion rands. Nine out of 25 municipalities, that is 36%, with allocation about 100 million rands, have a combined total of approximately 2.7 billion that is 96% of the provincial allocation. 68% of the provincial municipal infrastructure grant is allocated to nine water service authority municipalities, 
In the May, this allocation is meant for provisioning of basic services such as water, sanitation, electrician, and refuse removal. Therefore, a failure to spend these allocated budgets implies we are depriving our people of the much needed public goods and services. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to take this opportunity to correct misleading information desperately spread by some minority sections of this, of this August House about Limpopo spending. Spreading misleading information from this house negatively impacts on its integrity and, stand, and, and standing in society. The fact, the fact is that we have fought against underspending as we did against disclaimer audit outcomes. Finally, in the past two years, we realized progress in curbing underspending. Our efforts have brought underspending within the national norm of 2% of the total budget. In 2022-2023, if people can just listen carefully, in 2022-2023 financial year, Limpopo's underexpenditure was only 1.9% on its over 70 billion budget. Only 0.15% is what we surrendered. 0.15% is what we surrendered to the national treasury. And figures don't lie. Figures don't lie. Figures don't lie. The province the, 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 you are not allowed today to engage the speech of the Premier. You will be given an opportunity to debate on this speech. Not today. Not today, Honorable Members. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. The province, the province has improved spending, resulting in receiving an additional, listen carefully, resulting in receiving an additional 250 million rand this year for human settlement grant. Guess where we received it from? National Treasury. National Treasury, I must say this in English. National Treasury, after the Western Cape could not spend this money, gave it to us. From the Western Cape. The jewel, Western Cape built the jewel of British colonialism. Our emphasis, our emphasis on spending has nothing to do with expenditure for its own sake. It is essential as a means to deliver public goods and services. That is our ultimate mandate. Madam Speaker, through our social cluster program, we have made significant strides in the areas of cooperative governance, human settlements, and traditional affairs over the past five years. This journey has been marked by achievements such as municip municipalities attaining clean audits, improved disaster management coordination, and the introduction as well as the implementation of the district development model. Our focus includes transforming informal settlements through formalization, infrastructure connection, and servicing of sites. Approximately 
31,000 households have benefited, benefited from housing pro programs. The institution of traditional leadership has received substantial support. From 2014, we have been allocating vehicles to disabling senior traditional leaders to enable them to perform their work. We are honored that in 2023, we have allocated a further 102 vehicles to disabling senior traditional leaders. Our target is to complete the allocation by the end of this, this coming month, this month in fact, the coming month, March 2024. I want to take this opportunity to express my sincere gratitude to our traditional leaders for running initiative, initiation schools in ways that makes us the best in the country. We wish the 2024 initiation season a great success characterized by zero death. Working together with traditional leaders as the custodians of our culture and heritage, the provincial government will clamp down on illegal initiation schools. I still urge traditional authorities to find a lasting solution to matters of succession and dispute resolution on their own. As the government would like to stay clear from being entangled in disputes arising from traditional leadership succession, the government does not identify senior traditional leaders to recognize. Our role is limited to fulfilling our legislative recognition after the royal families and royal councils have themselves determined who their senior traditional leader is. Ours is just to recognize. The royal family. We just recognize the decision. The journey towards a better future for all residents continues with a strong emphasis of governance, development, and community well-being. Ladies and gentlemen, esteemed educators, hard-working school governing bodies, dedicated learners, and the resilient people of Limpopo, we are now left with 80 schools to complete the elimination of pit latrines. From 380 schools identified in 2017 as having in inappropriate in, in, in sanitation, this to us is a notable progress. Our sixth administration carries pride in offering the best results in the 30-year history of Limpopo. In addition to the commendable improvement in the metric pass rating of 2023, we have realized and increased the bachelor passes. We don't just pride ourselves with quantity, we also pride ourselves with the quality of results. <laughs> to move with the times, especially the digital, the, the digital technology, or technological uh, revolution, we have provided 35,000 tablets to grade one and grade six learners. <laughs> this initiative goes far beyond the gadgets. It equips learners with digital skills and prepares them for the evolving demands 
of the modern economy. By implementing digital technology in education, we are ensuring that our learners are well prepared for skills of the future. Currently, Limpopo boasts 25 focus schools, 23, sorry, focus schools comprising 15 technical high schools and eight agricultural schools. Our approach ensures that each district in our province benefit from hosting a focus school. We are graciously received, sorry, we have graciously received a donation from China, earmarked for, for the construction of an engineering and technical high school. A dedicated task team is now identifying a suitable site for this pivotal project. Our focus schools have played a crucial role in nurturing talent and providing specialized education in areas such as science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Our aim is to develop these schools to serve as centers of excellence, empowering our learners to excel in their chosen fields and contribute meaningfully to society. Special thanks to the Statist Statistics South Africa under the stewardship of our old son, Mr. Risenga Maluleka, as the Statistician General. Stats SA has donated tables to Limpopo from the census 2022. We have established Partnership to steer Limpopo skills development initiatives, ensuring that all sector education and training authorities, along with key stakeholders such as TVET colleges, community education training colleges, universities, and trade unions, as well as government departments, are aligned in our mission to uplift the youth through skills development. From 2021 to February 2024, over 1.2 billion rands has been invested in skills development in the province, benefiting over 26,000 learners and students, primarily the youth. This sustain, substantial investment underscores our commitment to empowering our young people. Looking forward, to the 2024-2025 financial year, we are excited to launch our flagship skills development programs with MISETA funding amount, amount, with MISETA funding amounting to approximately 137 million rands. This is huge. Remember, this is free money not from our, our, equitable, uh, our equitable grant. These programs, and thanks to Minister uh, Nzimande, these programs target 960 learners across various critical sectors, including apprenticeships in motor mechanics, diesel mechanics, mechanical fitting, welding, and electri uh, electrician trades. The MESITA supported program also target artisan recognition of prior learning for 70 workers and learnership for 250 learners in new venture creation. It further targets support for 10 small, micro, and medium enterprises, as well as cooperatives in product standardization and technical capacity building. It includes short skills development programs for 130 workers in solar installation. This initiative is crucial for skills development, youth empowerment, and employment. 
Honorable members, our path has been marked by significant milestones that have shaped healthcare in our province. We have made remarkable strides, particularly in reducing the HIV positivity rate amongst the 15 to 24 years age group from 1.9% to 1.3%. This surpassed our target. Our antiretroviral therapy has expanded, ensuring broader access to HIV treatment. Our efforts in TB treatment and maternal health care have positioned Limpopo as a provincial leader in these areas. Our infrastructure development efforts have been robust as well. We have commenced construction of the Limpopo Central Academic Hospital. We have commenced construction of the Limpopo Central Academic Hospital. I will be surprised. Such a huge achievement. <laughs> the construction of the Limpopo Central Academic Hospital reflects our dedication to expanding and modernizing our healthcare infrastructure and training of healthcare professionals, including the much needed specialists. The impact of this hospital will be profound, offering state-of-the-art of the healthcare services and serving as a hub for healthcare training and research. The upgrading of Ceylon Hospital, as well as other healthcare facilities, will improve the provision of healthcare in our province. The acquisition of 566 ambulances in the current financial year will enhance our emergency medical services, underscoring our commitment to provide timely and efficient emergency care to our people. <laughs> Remember, honorable members, what we said in the state of the province address, I think it was of 2016, uh, talking under correction, correction, that we will buy 50 ambulances every year. And we have been doing that without failure. Yes! Without failure. This year alone, we bought 566 ambulances. Our Rural Health Matters program has contributed significantly to reducing the backlog of surgery, taking quality health care to the people. The journey ahead is filled with challenges, but our resolve is stronger than ever. Together, we will continue to build a health care system that is resilient, inclusive, and capable of meeting the needs of our people. Netiasa. Our commitment to the health care and well-being of our people is unwavering. And through the national health insurance, we shall ensure that no one is left behind. Our journey is far from over. But with the continued support of our dedicated healthcare workers, partners, and the communities, I am confident that we will achieve even greater milestones in years to come. Together, let us continue to work towards a healthier Limbubu. Our journey towards creating a safer, more efficient transport system has seen significant milestones in the 2023-2024 financial year. We have embarked on a transformative journey to bolster our fight against road facilities, fatalities. Sorry. The recruitment of 150 young workers for our traffic leadership programs 
marks a pivotal step in the right direction. These learners currently receiving a stipend are being equipped with the skills necessary to enhance our traffic management capabilities by 2025. This initiative addresses the urgent need for capacity and opens opportunity for our youth. We have reinforced our commitment to road safety through the appointment of 274 road safety ambassadors. Deployed across all our five districts, these ambassadors play a crucial role. They safeguard pedestrians and improve the flow of traffic during peak hours. The refurbishing of the Limpopo Traffic College, including the construction of new residential and catering facilities, underscores our dedication to maintaining high standards of training. This investment not only ensures compliance with health and safety standards, but also positions the college as a premier traffic training institution in the region. The Shovaga Lula bicycle project distributed 2,197 bicycles to learners in rural areas over five years to promote non-motorized transport. This has an added spin-off of a healthy lifestyle. Our journey towards a safer, more efficient transport system is ongoing. Ladies and gentlemen, our commitment to the well-being and care of older persons has been unwavering. Through our efforts, 533 older persons now have access to residential facilities. And 13,665 benef benefit from community-based care and support services. We have champions, championed the rights and well-being of persons with disabilities, providing care for 294 people in residential facilities. We have ensured that 3,514 have access to services in protective workshops. In fighting HIV AIDS through social development programs, we have trained 750 implementers on social behavior, behavioral change and provided psychosocial support services to over 10,000 beneficiaries. Our family preservation initiatives have engaged approximately 74,000 family members in services, reunited 219 members with their, with their families, and facilitated the participation of over 29,000 in parenting programs. Through the expanded public works program, we have created over 1,500 work opportunities. We have empowered vulnerable individuals and communities with 7,200 households gaining access to food through our food security programs. Together, let us continue to build a brighter, a brighter future for the people of Limpopo through social development. Madam Speaker, since 2013, the provincial government has made significant progress towards building a capable, ethical, and developmental state. As part of this crucial imperative, we committed ourselves to fight against corruption in government, wastage, and mismanagement of public funds. During the State of the Province Address last year, we gave a report to this August House on the progress we have made working together with the Special Investigating Unit. In addition, we are pleased to report that we are also working together with Chapter 9 institutions, such as the Public Protector and the Human Rights Commission. For those who do not know, these are the institutions which 
which have been established by the democratic government since the 1994 democratic breakthrough. They were never there during the colonial and apartheid regime. Hence, corruption was so concealed under apartheid. This ANC government introduced the Hawks, introduced the SIU, introduced all these Chapter 9 institutions, so, just, so that we should expose corruption, even within our own organization. The decision of this progressive government to establish these institutions was fundamental to ensure that the rule of law is adhered to. Progress to date is that working together with the Special Investigating Unit, the provincial government has implemented its recommendations into the COVID-19 funds and appropriate sanctions are being muted against all those who, who were found guilty of wrongdoing. Notably, some government officials are facing criminal investigations currently as we speak. Similarly, we are currently implementing the public protector's recommendations on irregularities at the Department of Social Development in the main and other departments in general. In the same spirit, we are calling upon on all our municipalities and other water service authorities implicated in the water provisioning report by the Commission last year to cooperate fully with the Commission and implement the recommendations. In the same vein, I want to send a strong message to all those in the public service, particularly those who are prone to commit corruption, fraud and maladministration, to desist from committing those activities. Honorable members, during the State of the Province last year, we reiterated our commitment towards embracing and acknowledging the pivotal role played by our military war veterans in the struggle for freedom and democracy. This program of action has been under implementation since 1994. We know and we, we equally acknowledge that the plight of the military war veterans is the collective responsibility of our government. I am honored to report that the Provincial Interministerial Task Team established by the Honorable Deputy President, is progressing with no hindrance. Similarly, we are pleased to report that our decision to mandate all MECs to put specific plans to support our military war veterans is being implemented. Furthermore, our government continues to provide educational and skills development intervention housing and grants for all deserving military war veterans. We want to call upon all municipalities, honorable mayors, to do the same. Our resolve is guided by the imperative to, implicate, to, to implement focused interventions aimed at improving the living conditions of our military war veterans. We are precisely doing that once again, and once again, we dip our revolutionary banners in honor of all the heroes and heroes of our liberation struggle who laid down their lives for the democracy that we are all enjoying today. Honorable members, I want to take this opportunity to congratulate Bafana Bafana on restoring our pride in the football fraternity by achieving a bronze medal in the 2024 African Cup of Nations. We are proud of the significant number of players in Bafana Bafana who came from Limpopo. I also wish to thank other stars who make Limpopo proud in other sports groups arts and culture, both nationally and internationally. 
Madam Speaker, as part of the duties of the Premier, I have concluded several special projects which are in the main humanitarian in nature. I am pleased to report that since 2017, working with good Samaritans, some of whom are within our midst today, we have recommended, or should I say we have recorded, enormous achievements. My special word of gratitude goes to everybody who contributed immensely towards initiating this robust program aimed at eliminating the imbalance of the past by uplifting the socio-economic conditions of the Limpopo residents. The Premier's special projects are commitments and pledges made by the Premier and they have been implemented accordingly. I am pleased to announce the following special projects as duly completed. Thank you. The Premier has built and handed over a house to the family of Vosi Ramusi on the 22nd of April 2022. This was an intervention after the stalwart of our struggle for democracy untimely passed, untimely passed away. Similarly, the Premier built a house in honor of another hero of our struggle for democracy, Ephraim Poro Somashishi Morale. In Bota village, Ephraim Morale municipality, the house was handed over to the family on the 25th September 2022. The Premier donated an amount of 300,000 rands to the St. Matthew's Anglican Church in January 2023. In 2021, during President Ramaphosa's visit to precious Ramabulan's house in Chukui village, Makado municipality, the president expressed a wish for a house to be built for the Ramabulana family. The premier fulfilled the president's wish and the house has since been built and handed over to the family. <laughs> Precious Ramabulana was a student at Capricorn Tivet College. She was brutal, brutally murdered in gender-based violence. In 2023, the Premier has donated a house to the family of Inamabasa in Matolokwani village, Makudutamara municipality, to improve the living conditions of the family. The Premier has donated a laptop to a, a learner at Rivoni School for the Blind. This is a single laptop, however, we are mentioning it here because the cost is prohibited. The Premier has donated air conditioners on the 25th July 2017 to Tovela Secondary School. The Premier donated a complete set of school uniform to Gifilo Mukangwe and Khalad in Khaladi Primary School, Mamune Village in Makudutama local municipality on the 6th of April 2022. At Riboni School for the Blind, 12 state-of-the-art classrooms, girls and boys hostels, and a house for the manager of the facility have been successfully completed. In addition, the science laboratory and the administration block have also been completed in December 2023. As we speak now, the dining hall facility is near completion. The Premier also donated 34 laptops, solar system, and other facilities to Mafato Primary School in Mutatem. The following 
Honorable members, are outstanding premier special projects which are currently under implementation. Eight Southern Limp mining houses contributed over 127 million to the Malikana Bridge. The third turning ceremony occurred on the 21 February 2023. Currently, the bridge is under construction and, and upon completion, the long way to pass through the much used steel, steel bridge will be a thing of the past. A memorandum of understanding has been signed by Sandra and Ral to build the Moria Interchange Bridge for the St. Engenas ZCC Church. We hope now this project will take off, Ral Road Agency Limpo, together with Sandra. Sandra is completing detailed design of the project. As soon as that is completed, we will add another modern road infrastructure in Limpo. From 2018 to 2023, the Premier's Bazari Fund was award, has awarded bursaries to 48 learners to continue their studies in higher education and training. Remember, this is not budgeted in the fiscals. This is the money that we are getting from good Samaritans out there. I am reminded, honorable members, honorable speaker, of the words of another great South African artist, Johnny Tlek, who sang about the sprint, I mean the spirit of the great heart. It is the spirit of the great heart of Limpopo that has guided us through our challenges and triumphs. As I prepare to pass the baton to the next premier, and together with the current executive council to the next executive council, obviously will be coming from the, my right hand side. I am confident that this spirit will continue to guide our province towards greater heights. I would also like to send my words of special appreciation to the governing African National Congress for the responsibility entrusted to me as Premier for the past 11 years. The ANC did not bring me on board as a Messiah, but my glorious movement bring me brought me, sorry, brought me in as a servant of our people. I, I wish to acknowledge Premier Advocate Mwapura Mathudi, Premier Ambassador Silom Loto, and Premier Mr. Castle Matale for laying the foundation and steering the ship called Limpopo Provincial Government. I also wish to thank the Honorable Speaker, the Deputy Speaker, and all Honorable Members of this August House. To all political parties which were represented in this August House before and now, I thank you for our relationship which was both complementary and contradictory. I thank the Director General of the Provincial Government, Mr. Napin Chabeling, and all heads of departments and the entire complement of public servants for their support throughout our journey of transformation and development. Allow me, Honorable Speaker, to also thank all staff members in the Premier's office. You really made me feel very comfortable amongst you. <laughs> Honorable Speaker, I must single out this special person in my life during the administration, within the administration, 
for the past 11 years. Mtate Mohale Nchavele. Give it to our guy, Tau, one hour of heavy scour. Luana Mampasele, my provincial, my personal uh, assistant, Judy Mpasele. Luena Di Teto, Diawaswanele. These are the people who welcomed me in 2013 when I, when I joined government. And some will say, Marabatoba Babarekal Matali, Ugasu Megam Jajamutumu, Torukur Ursa Dalumawi. I have proven them wrong. Kevereki Lelubo Nabatua. Since day one to date, Azaga Gersa Daluman. I also want to thank my protectors, most of, most of whom I started this journey with from 2011, Punta Rani, Masiagwala, Stosa, Molokome, Pasha. I have never changed them. It's Tommy Lelobona from, from start to finish, and they've been so loyal to me. <laughs> and all of them, I inherited them from Premier Matali, Asaka Di Luman. I'll miss the humor under this tooth. You know, there is a road between uh, Mar Maratiani College and the Inplas. That road, 3.5 kilometers of that road, Kimpumalanga, and about four kilometers, Kelimpo. But this part, Yalimpumalanga, was always very clean, really, um, well looked after. So when I had it, it was serious problems. So to would say, "Gert oga yam kumala, er chief jaler zena ga gaiyo." Until such time, I went to Rale and said and told them, "Look, you are going to pave that tarot, and that tarot is now paved." They must thanks to Sarakwa. Honorable Speaker, I also wish to thank civil society organizations for their contribution in building the much needed social com uh, compacts in our province. To the people of Limpopo, I wish to say a big thank you for the support, cooperation, and encouragement. It was worth it. Finally, Honorable Speaker and Honorable Members, Finally, I wish to pay, to pay special tribute to my late wife, The Lady of Limpopo, me Margaret Matabat. She was a pillar of strength to me from the first day as I took over the responsibility as Limpopo Premier. My your support was not limited to my responsibility as the Premier. You are also a dependable Ali, a beautiful wife, my comrade, a caring mother to our children, and a pillar of strength to the impoverished, 
a gender-based violence activist and a darling to my family, relatives, and the people of Lumpopo. With your due diligence, of course, I wish to dedicate this speech, Honorable Speaker, to Mema Tabat. May her beautiful soul rest in peace. With this weight, I say thank you to you all. Limpopo for your trust and your un unwavering spirit. It has been my greatest honor to serve you. I thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you, Honorable Speaker.